Okay, here we go. So this is uh, part two of uh, our PhD basics tutorial. Um, I'm sheltered from the wind, but I am outside, so hopefully the background noise isn't too bad. All right, so picking up from where we left off, some of these numbers may have changed because I've been out since then unsuccessfully trying to image. So uh, whatever you had in the last video, we just are picking up right there. Nothing really has changed. We set these every night anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, let's see. So I've already got, uh, I've gone in here. Um, I've connected my camera. I've connected my mount. Uh, both of these are saying disconnect, so that's how you know that they're connected. All right, so I close that, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to begin looping. Uh, right now, I'm actually set at 0.5 seconds of exposure because I'm on a fairly bright star there, so give me a good signal-to-noise ratio. Ah, stupid thing. Anyway, all right, so um, <clears throat> here we are. We're looping on this star. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to calibrate. Now, this star just happens to be right up near the equator and the meridian, so that's where we want to be for our first calibration. This is, um, I like to do my calibration in the same spot that I'm on the same star I'm doing my drift alignment on. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to uh, tools. Oh, okay, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, so the bullseye here, you can actually turn these off or on. Um, we've got different uh, overlays that you can put. Um, it, it doesn't actually make any difference to it's it's just visual so don't worry about it if you're like hey mine doesn't have that or whatever this will work just fine with no overlay okay so yeah we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go to tools and here's what we want to do to start off okay um, we want to go to manual guide all right so now whatever your mount thinks is north and west and what is actual north and west doesn't matter it's all about what PhD wants to call north and west so those are the first directions it's going to calibrate in. So what we want to do is give it a couple of pulses here, basically until a star moves. Okay, so we give it a pulse in west, star moved, now we do north. Same deal, just click the mouse, click the mouse, click the mouse. I have a ton of backlash. I think it moved, I'm not sure. There we go, okay, that definitely moved. If you did missed it, here, I'll move it again. Okay, so there you go, it moved. All right, so uh, once that's done, um, this is just to clear out any backlash or whatever. It's gonna give you a more accurate calibration, keep you from getting some funky numbers. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and you're gonna click here at PhD. If uh, this is your second time throughout the night that you're calibrating, you've moved to a different part of the sky, you're actually gonna hold down shift and then click here. So it doesn't know where the hell it is. Okay, all you have to do is stop. If it does that and crosshairs don't line up, just stop, redo it, and shift, click PhD. Okay, the crosshairs line up. So now if you'll notice, it's doing a number of steps here, and the distance traveled here. So we're on step 9, and we've moved 10, 11. Okay, so that's interesting. Usually it goes 25 pixels. Hmm, I don't know why I did that. Anyway, all right, clearing backlash, and north step 1, 2... And here's the distance it's moving. Maybe that's arc seconds, maybe that's why. I'm not sure. Anyway, usually that goes to 25. But uh, it's not, so whatever. It's doing it, and so long as our graph looks okay afterwards, which we can see by coming up here to Tools, uh, Review Calibration Data. Okay, yeah, so as long as we've got like a right angle on these, uh, you don't really have to worry too much, and as long as it didn't do it in like two steps, as long as it takes at least about a half a dozen steps to get over there, you're fine. Okay, so close this out. All right, so uh, as you can see, it's already guiding. Now, I haven't polar aligned yet. That's fine. That's what we want to do. All right, so now what we're going to do is come up here to Tools, and we select Drift Align. Okay, so uh, then what we come down is we just... This is that if you've got an ASCOM, it'll let you slew, but I'm already at a star that I know is, is pretty close to the equator and meridian, so I don't have to worry about any of this stuff. So just click Drift to start the Drift tool. So now what it's doing is the RA axis is trending, the declination is not, okay? So the declination is just sitting there, and it's just watching what it's doing. Um, all right, so the trend lines, RA, don't worry about just ignore it, okay? It's not going to affect us right now. Um, and then just look at your red line. See this dotted line? 
that's basically kind of a, a prediction of which way it's heading. And my polar alignment, of course, is very, very, very good. Right, so you can see what your polar alignment error is right here. Uh, you know, negative 1.63 minutes or 23 pixels. And it actually takes about, I don't know, about a minute or two uh, for that to settle out and kind of figure out where it's going. But you essentially you've got, so we're, looks like we're kind of trending up a little bit. Whether that's north or south just kind of depends on where, what part of the sky you're in. Okay, so while that's running, um, we've actually got a really, really fast refresh rate here. We're down at uh, half a second. Um, you'll notice a couple things. Okay, so uh, first of all, you've got this circle going here. Now, this is kind of a circle of air based on how far off this line is from center. So the smaller that circle is, if you can get it all the way down there, if you can't see a circle, that's because your polar alignment's spot on. You'll look up here and you'll see uh, like three pixels of air or something or other. Anyway, so this circle is essentially uh, to kind of give you an idea of where, when you move your mount, where you need to put your star. Um, what I always find, and maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but if I thought originally that you're supposed to put the star on the line, but every time I do that, it seems like I'm off by half as much. So what I've been doing is I try to kind of go halfway in between. So what I'm going to do is when I move the mount, I'm going to guesstimate, I'm going to move it halfway in between. This thing's been running for about a minute now. You can see I'm negative 2.3 minutes off or something. Okay, so uh, click adjust here, okay? And that's going to stop the training, but the camera is still going. So now I'm going to move over to the mount, and I'm going to adjust the uh, alt as mount. And according to my notes, if I looked at them correctly, I think I'm turning the right one. You'll notice on the notes that I actually have a little cheat sheet saying, oh yeah, hey, if you, oh, nope, I think that was the wrong way. I've got that little cheat sheet saying, okay, if it's, if the star is in this part of the sky, then, you know, turn the knob this way to make the line go up or this way to make it go down. Okay, so that's not really halfway, but close enough. Okay, so then we're going to click drift again. And with any luck, that circle should be a lot smaller. If it's a lot bigger, then we will go the other way. So far, it's looking bigger. All right, so uh, yeah, you're gonna have to let this run for a little bit because, you know, as you can see, because of scene and whatnot, I actually have awful conditions. I've got a ton of wind. I've got uh, transparency issues. I've got clouds moving through. It's a perfect night for doing this and not imaging. All right, so actually, it looks like we did go the right way. Um, so you can see that this circle is nice and tight. You can see my air is down under a minute, more or less which I'm doing wide field, so that's fine. If I can get that thing to a minute, it's, it's, is that a minute? Yeah. Anyway, then I'm fine for the whole night. It's, it's, uh, I'll be able to guide that out no problem, and it, it's actually very, very, very good uh, polar alignment. So um, you can actually run this for a couple of minutes to see exactly what it's at or whatever, but all you're gonna do is you're gonna get a more accurate reading, but I can already tell just from looking at this that I'm gonna be right down there, pretty darn close. I could adjust it a tiny bit more, but for the sake of just getting this tutorial moving, we're gonna leave that as is. Um, <clears throat> so I did want to point one thing out. You'll notice the blue line here, okay? So the blue line is actually tracking. Anyway, and these bars here, these are the corrections that I told you about, okay? So this is what's actually being sent to the mount. So you can see that the blue line, the RA goes up a little bit, so boom, boom, it sends two small corrections, then it goes down, oh, sent a whole bunch of corrections, then it comes back up, sends a few corrections down, up. This actually looks pretty good, uh, you know, especially given my conditions right now. They're horrid. Anyway, so what you want is you should have a little bit of down, a little bit of up, a little bit of down, and okay, it was fine right there, a little bit of down, up, down, up, down. Anyway, what you don't want to see, and I'll give a demonstration of this, is, oops, I guess we have to have some aggression. Okay, so I've just dropped the aggression on the RA way down. So what you're seeing right here is the live view, okay? So you have all these little tiny corrections. And watch, it's going to 
defeat the purpose here. Okay, so basically what you don't want to see is that it keeps doing a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of corrections on one side, and it never switches over to the other side. I mean, it's just, it's trying, it's trying, and it's just not doing anything. <laughs> of course, this thing is, like, perfect. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, there, that's a good spike. All right, so you can see where it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse, and it's trying to correct, but it's just not happening. And see here, it's, seconds later, it's still out. Um, again, that's not actually all that bad. That's a little over two inches, two seconds of air, sorry. Anyway, um, but yeah, okay, so aggression at five is, is obviously a little bit too uh, low, I think, for the conditions tonight. Um, actually, I don't think it needs to be much higher than that, though. Maybe ten. Anyway, okay, so because you're seeing good, nice groups of corrections, that tells me that my hysteresis is actually pretty much spot on. If you see a lot of individual singles popping back and forth here, that's usually a combination of your aggression's too high and your hysteresis is too low. Okay, minmo. Uh, I think I called it minimum motion. It's, it's minimum movement. Anyway, so your minmo, what that is, uh, let me just close this drift tool that's in my way. Okay, so as soon as I close that, we're actually drifting here, and uh, it's going to make a bunch of corrections trying to get the deck back into uh, view, which this is all backlash right here. That's why it's making all of these corrections, and you're not seeing the red line, the declination move at all. Anyway, so it's clearing backlash right now. So what you can actually do if it's doing that is you can increase your aggression. You can see now, oop, and then get ready to drop it back down in a big hurry. Okay, that's probably too low. Okay, so now we've got that out. All right, so because my star is drifting upwards, um, I'm actually, obviously you're supposed to do your polar alignment. I should be slowing to the horizon, but I'm actually in my front porch, and I don't really have a good view of the horizon anyway, so heck with it. Okay, so I'm going to make this uh, graph a little bit easier to see. All I did there was I changed the range, the y-axis on the, on the graph. So it looks much worse, but it's, uh, it just means that you're able to see the corrections better. All right, so what you're seeing right now is, see, the deck, we haven't sent a signal, single correction signal. So my action, my polar alignment is fantastic right now. Um, I just lucked out. It's, it's actually quite good. Okay, so uh, my RA on this mount just bounces around. It's, a, it's an atlas. It's got all kinds of non-periodic errors that I can't get out. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Where were we? Oh, we were talking about this. Aggression, hysteresis. Okay, minmo, for figuring that out, real simple trick. Uh, somewhere in the sky that you're going to be, um, uh, you know, doing your imaging on, what you want to do is you want to come here to this guiding assistant, okay? And what the guiding assistant's going to do is it's going to turn off guiding. And all it's going to do is it's going to look at the star and it's going to see how much does it move, all right? Now you want to run this for at least a minute or so, and it's got the timer here. I would say two minutes is probably even a little bit better, and you have to do this after you've done your your polar alignment, because um, otherwise the star is just going to move off the screen, and it, you're not going to get an accurate reading. In fact, it'll yell at you and say, hey, your polar alignment stinks. You sure you uh, don't want to fix that? Okay, so what it says to do here is, um, uh, you know, click stop when the RMS values have stabilized. So here's your RMS values. Anyway, I find that at least a minute um, it is how long it takes for those to stabilize. Uh, if your scene is really poor, you might need to go a little bit longer. For the sake of this video, we're just going to say, okay, actually, we're already approaching a minute. 54 seconds. I'm going to call that close enough, so I'm going to hit stop. All right, so now here's what recommendations it says. It says change your minmo and your RA to 50, change your deck to 15. All right, so uh, this thing is actually really good. So I'm just going to click apply on both of those and close this. So you're going to see it's changed my minmo to 0.5 and my deck minmo to 0.15. All right. <clears throat> hey, look, you can actually see I'm making a couple of uh, corrections on the deck. Here was one here and then a couple more here. Now, you see how your deck is kind of given a whole bunch of here? Um, that's because our minimum mo is a little bit less. So I would actually say that's almost 
seems excessive to me. And let's try changing our aggression a little bit. But it, you're always your declination. You should always have on one side of the center line. You should never have it on bouncing back and forth. If you do, you're not level. Your aggression's too high. One of those two things, or your minmo is too low uh, for the conditions. Because what you're doing is you're you're either overcorrecting or the scene is moving and you're chasing it. So you don't want that. All right. So it's kind of got it under control. See here, it is bouncing up. It makes a couple of corrections. And, oh, okay, that's where we started. I was like, wow, this changed, and it didn't make any corrections. Okay, so here's where it started making corrections. So, RA looks okay. Um, it's not great. But that's actually not half bad. Okay, yeah, so we're making lots of corrections on your deck in order to try to elicit a change. So, again, click up your aggression. And I'm just basing that on the fact that I've got all of these lines here, all these corrections, for it to move, you know, 0.15 pixels. Boy, that is some horrible. That's where the gear has a tooth missing. It's actually not that bad. Two seconds. Okay, so anyway, um, now you should kind of have an idea of what's going on, though. All right, so... You know, as far as your settings go, okay, see, we're getting a lot of RA connect corrections, and it's not really doing much here. So your RA aggression needs to come up a little bit. Maybe let's try 15 or 20. Anyway, um, but yeah, so Minmo set with the guiding assistant up in your tools, okay? Uh, hysteresis, like I said, you, I haven't really touched on that, but you, it's a smoothing algorithm, and it's for just for your RA on this setting. So as you're doing this, um, your 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 hysteresis is pretty much if you're seeing like you know all of these little spikes uh, you know like it comes up here and it has a spike here has a spike here has a spike here and it keeps bouncing back and forth and doesn't look like kind of a, a wave a sine wave that's going to be your hysteresis uh, let's see I could actually probably take that out and we'll see what it looks like Oop, all right so notice here my declination has now changed so it's trying to go north or whatever direction that is. In fact, I can change that. Let's find out which direction it is. Okay, so I, I had the deck regression too high. All right, it was making corrections this direction, this direction, and then it drifted down here, and oops, now it's trying to change. Because of all of that backlash that I have, and the fact that I did the drift alignment, and I know my deck should be moving upwards on this graph, um, you know, now I've got all this backlash here. So as soon as it finally does start doing something, it's going to be you know, having a clear backlash. Okay, perfect. Now now we're seeing what hysteresis does. You see this? You got three, you got one, you got two, you got four, one here, one here, one here, one here. All right, so you're getting all these kind of bumps and bounces. Your hysteresis is going to help smooth that out some. I think I had it set at 15 before, and that was actually pretty good. How bad am I doing here anyway? Oh, okay, good. <laughs> it's a problem with doing these videos. It's your big fear is that you know you're going to have something totally screwed up, and people are like, "Wow, you're able to actually image with that? You've got you know 42 uh, seconds of air." It's like, no, my mount's not that bad usually. So, but okay. So anyway, get a feel for it. Um, the other thing that we can do is if your scene is crazy uh, bad is you can increase this. Remember I said this isn't really exposure so much as how often it updates. All right, so the scene is actually, well, I'm right at the zenith, so, or up at the meridian, actually. So the scene is actually not too bad up there. For some reason, the rest of the sky is awful. Um, but if you drop this down, and I don't want to go too, well, let's do two seconds. Anyway, you can either make things better or you can make things worse, um, just depending on your scene. Anyway, if your scene is really bad and that star is just sitting there and it's moving around like you're looking at, you know, a rock in the bottom of a pool, it's moving all over the place. Anyway, your uh, guider is going to be trying to fix all of those little corrections. The star hasn't moved, but it thinks it has, so it's trying to fix all these corrections. Um, anyway, and so you just, you know, by decreasing your aggression or in the case of scene, 
just increasing the time that it updates the star, you kind of get a better average. Now, you can see that that was actually a bad move. You can already tell that I'm kind of like, you know, bam, I bounced out here to 2, and I'm bouncing down here to, what, 1.25. Anyway, so probably the scene conditions actually warrant a little bit faster update. I think that the, the guider was actually doing a pretty good job with these little tiny corrections, but you could kind of see, you know, your peak to peak. I was mostly staying, 90% of the time I was staying, you know, between 1 and 1. So, you know, 2 seconds of... Uh, of air there that's that's I mean nothing to complain about anyway so um, I think we covered everything so we're gonna call that a uh, day and if you have any requests for something for me to you know cover more of um, you know just uh, leave a message in the comments and I'll see what I can do all right have a good one